Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our beginners webinar. We're very excited to share with you uh, kind of the basics of free camp and get you to a place within the next 20 to 30 minutes uh, where you're really going to feel comfort, confident and comfortable with free camp uh, and, and will be able to make your organization much more productive thanks to it. So I'm going to really quickly sign up as a uh, user, uh, and I'm sure most of you have already done this, but uh, I think it's important to highlight some of the things that you went through uh, the first time around, which may have not made as much sense uh, as, as they will uh, when I explain them right now. So the first thing that we do is we sign up for a project, and so I'm going to create Jack Johnson's website. Then I'm going to choose a color, and colors are very important because um, they're going to, in the next design we have coming up, they're going to tell you really quickly which project you're in just by the color you've chosen. And if you uh, need to change the colors, that's going to be very easy to do as well. So uh, don't don't get too too caught up in it. Um, now the group name is something that a lot of people have problems with, um, and so we want I wanted to spend a little time talking about group names and what are some of the ways uh, that they could be used. And what are they? So, so groups at the very gener at the very basic level are a way to create hierarchy. So instead of having you know 50 projects and some of them are my uh, freelance projects, some of them are my free camp projects, and some of them are my personal projects, uh, we didn't want to have that uh, all these projects mixing together. Uh, we wanted to have cohesion between the projects that are similar to each other. So, for example. When I used to do freelance work, I had a freelance group. So this project would have gone under my freelance group. Uh, then I also had a personal group where me and my girlfriend would have shopping lists uh, or I would organize other things like camping trips or whatever I wanted to do on my personal time. And I had a free camp group where we had all the different free camp projects from mobile to um, the blog and whatever needs to be organized in the free camp realm, we would organize in there. Uh, there's many other ways that you can use groups. For example, another way that I've like I've tried before that kind of worked nicely was creating a separate group for each client. And within that group, uh, so let's say it's you know Jack Johnson's the client here. Uh, within that group, I would create a client project. So Jack Johnson website would be the client project. So this is I'm only going to invite my client to in there, and I'm going to organize with him and do all the revision work. Uh, separately from the other de the development project where I'm going to invite all my contractors, my colleagues, and we're going to work together to, to create uh, what the client is going to eventually see. Um, but the separation can be nice. Not a lot of companies like to have their contractors talking directly to the clients. Um, it typically is a more restricted uh, flow of information there. Uh, so here for this example, I will just use... Um, freelance group uh, and something else to notice is that um, later on when you do install group applications like invoicing uh, or CRM or password manager it's gonna matter uh, which group and how you've organized your groups uh, because all the people in those projects would have access to for example the, the password manager so the nice thing here is that I want all my freelancers to have access to our image hosting providers, to our YouTube, to our Vimeo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the password manager application, which manages our passwords, on the freelance group, and then invite all the people I want to have access to it. Uh, so this is nice because you don't have to have a special project for passwords or something like that. It, ni it nicely unites all the freelance work in one uh, group with one application. Uh, and description, create an, a nice modern website. So here, uh, you're presented with the choice to install these applications. A lot of people like to just install to-dos and go on. Um, I highly suggest against this. I highly suggest you just install all the applications. And it's the nice thing is that you can install them. And if you end up not using it, it's trivial to uninstall it. It is one click, and it's uninstalled. Um, so I highly suggest just installing them at first, trying them out. Uh, and you know, to-dos, I'm going to talk more about each application, but to-dos, Basically, task management, uh, what needs to be done, who needs to do it, when it needs to be done by. Discussions is like forums. You have, you know, typically we use it to organize ideas. So somebody thinks that we should try uh, to use a different library or use uh, different designs. 
Uh, so that's where you kind of do discussions about ideas and stuff, and you're able to then um, create to-dos from those discussions. Uh, milestones is a great way to set goals. So for example, when are you going to launch the website? Uh, and then you can, like for example, let's say we can add our client. Now he's going to see this project and he's going to see the milestones. Um, so then he's going to know that our, our launch date is planned for, let's say, the 30th of April. Um, time is for time tracking. It's a great way for you to track your own time or for your freelancers or contractors to track time that you're going to pay them for. Uh, now we're, we're taking to the invite screen. So I'm going to invite Jack, our client. Uh, I'm going to mark him as a client. I'm going to invite um, our worker, our coworker. Um, and he's going to be an admin. He's, he's my manager, so I'll, I'll have him be as an administrator. Another way to expedite this process, of course, is to um, add uh, Google Contacts, and then it will allow you to autocomplete. Uh, something interesting to notice that happened is when I added Jack Johnson, he already has an account, so it automatically put his name here, whereas John Smith does not have an account, so I have to sp specify the name. Uh, so. That's it, I've invited the people to the project and I can start uh, working. So I'm taking to the main page and there's a little nice wizard that you probably walked through already. But I wanted to just do this uh, verbally and, and kind of explain what you're looking at, how this is all laid out and why. Uh, the most important element of course on the top left is choosing projects. It's a very nice quick way to access uh, all the projects you have, but also the applications in those projects. So it really saves you time uh, to go directly into to-dos or discussions from here. Uh, and if you're like me and you have 50 or 100 projects, reordering the projects is really nice. You click here and you can choose which one goes where. Uh, great way to organize um, the hierarchy and, and where each project is so, so you can much quicker get to the projects that you think are important to you. Um, going on to the top right, the blue bar, upgrading storage. Of course, we offer 20 megabytes for free which we believe is enough for a bunch of text files and a, you know, a bunch of images. Uh, but if you do need more, the, the basic storage is very cheap for, for 250, basically a cup of coffee a month, you get a whole gigabyte, which very few people can, can fill up. And if you need a little more, I, our pricing is very, very reasonable. Uh, my account is very important as well. Uh, this is where you can change your email, add an uh, avatar, um, more importantly though, the notification settings. So some people will do everything from their email. So they'll come in here, they'll choose full, uh, and now they're gonna get notified about anything and everything that's happening in the project. Uh, whereas some people actually wanna do everything from within FreedCamp, so they're gonna use widgets, which we'll talk about in a second, and manage everything through there. Um, if you don't know yet, just you know, leave a, a default, there's a reason uh, for that. And one of my favorites is the Connect tab. Here, if you have a Google, Twitter, or Facebook account, you can quickly authenticate with that account. And next time you come in, you don't have to do anything but click on the icon in the login screen. You just click on the icon and you're logged in in seconds. So no need to remember a password or username. Just click on the authentication you use like Twitter and you're, um, you're logged in really, really quickly. Uh, the subscriptions icon uh, item is where you could quickly and easily manage your subscriptions. So if you purchased storage or you purchased one of our paid applications from the marketplace, this is where you can cancel it or renew it. Um, we wanted to make it really easy to get back in and see what's what you're paying for. Uh, the help is a great collection of things that people have commonly asked about. So uh, this is uh, this should be if, uh, sufficient for most. And if it's not, uh, we have a great section here of ways for you to contact us and we're really good about getting back to you very very quickly uh, and so so please drop us a line if you see bugs if you have questions or requests um, please uh, quickly uh, contact us and we'll get back to you um, then we have project templates and project templates are basically a way for you to um, create a boilerplate for for example for all my clients web design clients like I know I'm gonna need to create a ticket for wireframes I know I'm gonna need to schedule uh, within seven days an appointment with the client to talk about logistics and I'm not gonna need to set up their social um, SEO so these these are all tasks and milestones and stuff that I can already have waiting for me so when I create a uh, template the next time I add a project 
I can choose that template. This isn't showing up here because I don't have any templates, but you can just choose that template and have everything ready for you uh, and really expedites the process of starting a new project with a client. Uh, manage projects is probably the second most important here. Uh, it allows you to obviously create new projects, um, create groups. Uh, a very new important feature is managing administrators for the groups. Uh, so here, as I said, John is a manager. So if I make John a, uh, an administrator to the group, he's going to be able to now fully manage everything within this group as if he's me. So he can create new projects, and this is a brand new feature. He can create new projects, install applications, pretty much invite people, do all that you could typically do. So if you were uh, out getting clients and working with the clients and you had somebody who's actually doing all the uh, organization and stuff, this is this feature has been extremely requested. Uh, so this is how you do it. You click on Manage Administrators and you, um, you're you able to add people as, as administrators. Uh, you can manage the users. So for the Jack Johnson website, obviously we have Jack and John. Uh, so you can see here group admin is, is John Smith and we have Jack Johnson. You can invite more people, right? So if you wanted to add some more people to this, uh, you can manage who's invited and see that, you know, they still haven't accepted. So you can see the status. And if they said they never got the email, you can quickly resend it to them. Uh, row permissions uh, is a nice way to quickly choose like, okay, actually I want the client to also see discussions. Um, and you can actually create your own roles. Sometimes you may have some advanced usage where you have one type of freelancers. For example, you have your designers and you want your designers to be separate from your engineers. So instead of having this default generic user, you can create engineers and designers and then you can have the designers have access to to-dos and the engineers, you can have see the bug tracker from our marketplace, which is very much tailored to engineer work. Um, so, so this is a really nice way to, to allow people to see certain applications and have multiple departments working in one app. Uh, so this is, again, very important to manage page, managing your project. Um, once the project's complete, you can deactivate it. Or uh, if you need to change the color because you don't like the color, you can uh, edit the project and choose a, a different uh, color that more fits this, this project. And here, finally, the marketplace. Uh, as I said, this is a great place to extend the uses of FreedCamp. Uh, the CRM is, is awesome for having all your contacts, all your leads, uh, quickly leaving notes, logging calls that you've had with them so that you remember what you've talked about. It's, it's a great little tool. Uh, the book tracker, which we're renaming soon to Issue Tracker, is a, a great application for engineers to do um, uh, basically development process from you know from the planning to the to working on it to having communications it's a, a very nice issue tracker uh, invoices is uh, a just just phenomenal tool to to build your clients I've been using it for my freelance projects for a long time uh, and it has a fresh books import which is great because you can just really seamlessly switch from fresh books to our invoices and start saving a lot of money uh, very quickly Wikis are just phenomenal for uh, documentation and planning out. If you're a gaming studio, you can plan the whole game in one wiki and keep evolving it. Um, it's it's great little tool to, to document things and share the knowledge with your company. There's also something called public wikis. So then you can actually publicize them and show them to the whole world, uh, almost like a blog. So it's a great little way to, and it's only getting better. Uh, password manager. Uh, lets you manage passwords. So, for like I said, if you have, you want to share with your um, your freelancers, your Twitter, your YouTube accounts, because you want them to be involved in the social media. Uh, this is a great way to share things, and it's extremely secure. Everything's encrypted. Uh, nobody has access except you. Uh, Tasky uh, is is one of my favorites. Um, I'll just install it right now. Uh, just to see how simple it is, and and. 20,000 people have installed Tasky, um, but it's it's that simple. Just install, it's done. Here's Tasky, uh, and I'm going to talk a little more about Tasky later on. But um, that's it. So let's go back to the dashboard where we were initially. So um, we've talked about um, the top part. Here you see it says dashboard and Tasky. Now. 
If you go into a project, you see that this changes. Now the applications of this project are showing up here with a blue header. So very important, orange header is for groups, group applications, blue is for project, and green is for personal. So you're the only person who's gonna see the green ones. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the dashboard from up here and talk about the widgets a little bit. So widgets are just a great way to, to keep, um, as a manager at least, for me it's, it's very important and I know that all my guys also love it as a way for them to keep um, ch check of their own work. So here I'm gonna create a widget uh, for to-dos and for all projects assigned to me. Um, and I'm just gonna say like my tasks. And so this is a great way for me to quickly see, hey, what am I supposed to be working on? Um, but more importantly sometimes to say, okay, well I'm gonna make another widget for John and I wanna see all in progress tasks that he has going on. So what's, so how does that work? So basically, I've asked all my guys that whenever they're working on something, they need to mark the task as in progress. And so then I know this is what they're working on uh, at this time. So it's a great way when I log into FreeCamp, the first thing I see is like, aha, uh -huh, that's what everyone's working on. Uh, I don't have to ask them. I don't have to follow up with them. I just, just see it. Uh, we do by default add the recent activity widget, and this is just gonna show a nice little timeline of things that have happened within all your projects. Uh, you can create widgets that are activity just for a specific project. Um, so for example, I have my own widget that's just for FreeCamp. Uh, you can create a widget for, for most of the other applications. So I highly suggest create a widget of each kind, play with it, get this dashboard to be something that's extremely useful every time you log into the system. Uh, with that said, uh, these green buttons here are always the most important actions of the page. So in the dashboard, creating a project and a widget are the most important. Uh, when we go to to-dos, managing the to-do groups, so if you want to have specific groups, uh, is very important. And so let's make our first to-do. Uh, so you can quickly choose some of these properties like who it's assigned to who you want to notify uh and keep it and, and something cool to note uh realize about this notify feature is that you can only assign it to one person so let's say that i'm going to be the one doing the task but in reality it's me and john that are going to try to do this task so instead of having two people responsible for it at the end of the day let's say i'm going to be the one responsible for it so it's assigned to me but i'm going to also notify john which means that he's gonna get an email that this task is created, so he's gonna know about it, and so he's gonna be able to work on it as well. Uh, so I'm gonna add this task, and then I'm gonna add a few just um, sample tasks uh, here, just to show you some, um, some cool things. So first of all, uh, instead of having like an edit button where you can just click edit and have to change all the properties about it to do, We've made it so much easier. So you can just quickly remove the assignment from a person just by clicking the little X. Uh, if you wanna edit this because ASD doesn't mean anything to you, you just click on it. That's it, just a click and it's it's it's, it's editable. So I uh, really quickly was able to change the meaning of that to do. Uh, if I do wanna assign it to someone, so let's say I wanna assign this to John, I just drag his name, this little tag from here, drag the name, drop it, done, John's assigned. Uh, I want to have a due date, he needs to do this by tomorrow. Again, I choose the date here, grab the tag, drop it on the to-do, and uh, done. And you can do this with all the other uh, things like priority and progress. Uh, but for progress, there's something even faster and cooler. Uh, you just click on the little checkbox, and it instantly toggles to in progress. You click on it again, and it completes it. Uh, and if you don't want to see these completed tasks, because they're just crowding the interface, you just click here on the height completed to-dos, and you will no longer see completed uh, items. So when I complete this one, it's gonna stay there for a few seconds, give me a chance to undo it, and then it's just gonna disappear. So when you have thousands of to-dos, this is very, very important uh, to not see the completed ones. Um, so once you do wanna see the to-do, and see the extended description that you may have added, you click on the comments, you hover, you cl click on the comments. So here's the extended description. Uh, I can remove the assignment, because it's currently assigned to, uh, to me. Uh, I can start the progress. These are just some quick actions here. I can do a full edit and edit you know, anything about this to do. Um, and here you can add comments, right? So 
here's a comment, I can add an image. Um, so I'm going to add an image, it's going to upload, and uh, then I'm going to be able to actually add it in line. Uh, there it is, and when I submit it, you will see that it was added into my um, comment, which is a really great feature to show off like, hey, like look at this part of this document or something, instead of just having them attached on the bottom, which they are gonna as, as well. Uh, here are the notifications. So as you saw, I had chosen to subscribe to John Smith, but now I think he no longer is, needs to be involved with this task. Just take his name off, or I can even take my name off, and now nobody's gonna get notified when something happens with this task. Uh, but it's very important that people can unsubscribe themselves if they feel like they shouldn't be notified about um, certain things. So that's to do's. Um, pretty straightforward. Adding an extended description, you come to the right here and it expands it. So you can click and just add description. And then it just disappears. Um, so it's very, very quickly. You can just see the extended description, hide it, um, add new ones. Dragging is simple as well. Just grab it by the little gray dots and, and move. Um, so the last thing I think about this uh, to do's is that you have ability to filter. So if I want to only see things that John's doing, just click his name. And now I'm only seeing John's um, to do's and cancel the filter. I can sort by when it's due, when it was created. Uh, we're, we're probably going to be adding some more th things to sort by. Uh, so let's go on to discussions. So discussions again, very simple, just a great way to start ideas. Um, and it's much better than doing these ideas in, um, it's much better than doing these uh, ideas in a to-do because then the to-do just gets crowded. Uh, it's very nice to just talk about it here in the discussion. And then finally, when you've figured it all out, just create a to do uh, and potentially add a link to it, but move it into the, the tasks. And here you just discuss things. Um, something we also do with this is we use this little uh, pin icon and it stays uh, at the top. So we have a developer code guide. So it tells our developers certain code rules they need to follow. Um, so this is a really nice way to keep that at the top always. So when they come back, they always see it, they know it's important and they can quickly get access to it. Uh, by default, it's sorted by activity. So when somebody adds a comment, instantly the discussion floats to the top. So you know you need to look at it. Uh, but you can you can also sort it by date. So when it was created. Um, that's about it for discussions. You can obviously create new groups to organize better. Uh, moving on to milestones. Uh, again, very, very straightforward. Let's say we need to launch the site uh, by the, tw the 29th. Um, and this is very important and it's signed to everyone. Uh, so there we go. And there's a little blue indicator here uh, to show you. So you can just quickly skip through months and see exactly what's coming up and, and just milestones. Um, so very nice way to have goals, um, big goals for the company to know. Everyone's gonna get notified uh, with reminders. Uh, and we're going to be adding integration with to do's where here you'll be able to see all the to do's this is linked to so you know, when I complete these to do's, then this milestone can be completed as well. Uh, that should be coming in soon. And of course, there's sorting uh, and, and filtering. Time tracking, great way to just track things for yourself. So I spend five hours on something I can just jot it down. Um, and then I'm going to put it for myself. And then I can just, if I have to do some more work, I can just track it. I can click start working on it. Notice here, this little animation starts off and this widget is going to follow me anywhere I go, uh, which is great. So if once I go to the files application, um, it's still there. I can still track the time uh, and you can mark it as build. You can reset it. Yeah. Uh, you can, start and stop working from here. This is great. And again, this is useful for you or for your uh, people that are billing you for hours, a good way for them to track uh, their time as well. So let's move on to files. Uh, files, one of my favorite usages is, is I typically use it. I just have clients only see the files application. And what I do is, for example, I'm going to add a file. And um, uh, 
I'm gonna add a file here and add some comment first first concept and I will add Jack to this so that Jack gets notified of this file um, he's gonna get an email and so when he goes in there um, sorry something to point out there's a really nice feature here to preview um, what you've uploaded um, so when when Jack goes inside of it so you click on it and you can download it or, or see the versions and comments uh, when Jack clicks the link and goes to this page he's gonna be able to view this uh, and then say like I love it but add this so he's gonna give us some suggestions uh, so we're gonna come in here and add some <clears throat> add some versions uh, so it's, it's, it's a nice way to evolve the design as they're leaving feedback they're saying you know can you do this can you change this and you keep adding revisions and they can see the latest revision and they can say uh, let's go back to number one and so now you know they really liked or some element from number one um, it's, a, it's a really nice way to kind of have a back and forth communication with your clients uh, or, or even co-workers about the design as it evolves um, Let's look back at Tasky. Uh, very, very great um, feature to just keep and, and check things you, you like to work on. Um, it can be related to projects. It cannot be uh, a, a cool feature um, that I like is that when you come in here, you see that things that are due tomorrow are going to show up on the right so even if you have a list of 300 things and they're all kind of do different times uh, things will bubble up here so you know okay this is something I should be working on today um, in settings you can choose to hide completed to do so once you do have over 100 I'm sure you will want to do this um, and and that's about it it's, it's very simple editing is done just like to do is just click on it um, and you start modifying it so very very straightforward um, so let's install some applications from the marketplace like calendar which is um, very popular it's been installed over 80,000 times and it's a very very useful application um, so, when it, so when I chose it now I can install it onto my project I can have my client see it or not um, so let's go inside of that application So as you can see, nice little overview of what's coming. Uh, I can see there's a do, uh, to do due tomorrow that John's working on. I can see that we need to launch the website by the 29th. So this milestones, to dos, everything that's got a due date is gonna be in here. And it's really cool because if the client says, you know what, it's okay if we launch it on the 30th, I can just go right in here, change the due date, and voila, it's, it's changed. It's a very good visual way of saying uh, you know, this is when it's happening and you can quickly schedule to do. So for example, if, I, if I'm launching on 30th, I want to remind myself test for bugs the day before. And so I can make that into a to-do or a milestone, but let's say I'm going to make it a to-do and I'm going to assign it to John. And now really nicely visually is able to see like, okay, well, good. Now we know that we're going to test for bugs the day before we actually are planning on launching the website. Um, so again, very great way to visually see this. And if you're like, and if you're like me, uh, and you use your iPhone, and you love the calendar on your iPhone, and you love to see what's coming up, syncing with your Google Calendar is a great way to do this. So when you sync with Google Calendar, and then you get your Google Calendar on your iPhone or any other calendar application you use, it will sync up, and you will see what's coming um, from your favorite calendar application. So this is really, really great feature uh, for, for a lot of people. Um, and um, yeah, there's there's uh, a bunch of really useful applications in the in the marketplace now uh, that I highly suggest checking out. Um, uh, the the password manager is also free, um, and I highly suggest checking checking that out. Uh, and let's talk about the final and I think one of the one of my favorite features, and I think one that a lot of people uh, miss out on. I think one out of five users uh, really use this. Like one out of five teams truly use this. They add thousands and thousands of wall posts and they use it as an internal social network. Uh, and four out of five people seem to not know about it or um, 
they don't know how to use it. So let me just kind of give you an explanation. So first of all, as you notice, it's orange, so that means it's a group application. And the way it works is that is that if I had created two projects, and in one of my projects I invited John, who's my coworker, and, in, and I created a completely different project and I invited Jack, on the wall, Jack will never see anything that John posts. Because they don't have any projects in common, it always separates and doesn't show you things from people you, you shouldn't know anything about. So when I post, even though both of them will see my message, because I'm in projects with both of them, when they post, they will not see each other's uh, messages. Now, however, they are in, in the same project right now, so everyone's gonna see these messages. Uh, and it's a really great way to socially just talk to people and, and have like little conversations. Uh, it's even really useful as a chat system. And I'll explain why. So if I say, let's have lunch. Um, oops. It gets instantly added. now. If Jack or John are on this page, this is going to appear instantly in front of them. And they're going to be able to say something, and I will also see it instantly. It is a completely chat-like system. People start the conversation on top, and then they have a, a hundred messages within it. Um, it's basically a great group chat. Uh, something else that's really useful is like if you want to just specifically point something to somebody and, and get their attention quickly, is just say something like... Um, Hey at Jack and it's gonna auto complete down arrow enter and it's gonna auto complete. Let's have lunch. So this will actually send him an email right away, get him into the conversation, um, and, and get his attention. Alternatively, if you are concerned about privacy and who's seeing what, you can just choose who's gonna see this. Uh, so you can click on this little icon here and you can choose only Jack should see this. Um, submit. And now only Jack is going to be able to see. And you can cover over this little icon. You see that only Jack is, is seeing um, seeing this. It's, it's, past, it's, it's, it's protected. It's secure. Um, so, yeah, check out the wall. It's, it's been, you know, we have a lot of success with companies using it to um, have different departments talk together in one place. Um, it's a great little tool uh, that, that we think is that you, you should find a lot of great use from it and um, thanks for watching and have a, a wonderful rest of your day